Welcome to the survey area inside of HearFish. This is where you can build new surveys and review results of surveys that you have deployed. To build a new survey, you use the Add New Survey button in the top right corner. This will take you to a screen where you can name the survey that you would like to create. The second portion here is the URL in which the survey will pop over. The website tracking code needs to be verified and working on the URL that you put in this section. But so long as it's there, you can have it go on any page you desire. When the individual has completed the survey, they will land on this website page that you designate in this area. Next, you have some additional options that you can configure per survey. The first is you can add all responses to a single note inside of Bullhorn. You just need to pick the appropriate note type. And then as soon as a survey completes, all of the questions and answers that the individual has provided will get added to a note onto their record inside of Bullhorn. You also have an option to send a notification each time that a survey completes. You can send that notification to the owner of the candidate or the sales contact. And you can specify additional email or emails if you want additional individuals to be notified whenever a survey completes. Next, it brings you to the overview area inside of a survey. In the first module, you can see the, the some survey stats of the deployed survey, the open rate, starter rate, and completion rate. Next, you'll get a idea in which uh, the kind of the overview of the survey questions that you've built. So each survey will start with an introduction message and you can hit this edit button to customize this. Merge tags are supported in this area. So you can edit and customize that to your heart's desire. And then you have your questions, which you build out in this area by either hitting the add question in the top right corner or adding your first question here. And then at the end of the survey, there's a completion message that occurs. You can, again, customize that as well. So when you're adding survey questions, you'll see some options here. So you have an NPS style question. This will populate with the kind of NPS style question already built inside of the question. You can insert merge tags or change this if you like. You have the ability to customize the scale. You can do one to five or zero to 10. For each survey question that you create, you can make them optional or required by configuring the required checkbox, either checked or unchecked. Next, you can also customize the X and kind of the X axis here, um, kind of the, the low variable and the high variable. So you can have that display whatever text you like. And then also interestingly, you can save specific responses back to survey questions directly to fields inside of Bullhorn. The fields that are going to be able to be saved to will typically correspond to the type of answer that you're going to receive. So for NPS and rating style questions, typically kind of any integer type fields will be available that you can select. And then whenever uh, someone fills out that question, their response will get saved directly to the field that you specify. Now, what's interesting with the NPS question is this will tie in directly to the dashboard NPS section um, for your company. So all of your NPS style questions that you utilize in surveys will get kind of uh, summarized in that area. The rating question is similarly structured to the NPS, although you can ask any, any sort of other question that you'd like and it won't get included in those NPS scores uh, and kind of aggregate data. So that is the difference between those two and you have the same option to save information to bullhorn fields. Choice, this question uh, type, you're able to have uh, multiple choice kind of answers and you can specify as many as you like. You just add them in this area below. You also have the ability to, to save this information to fields inside of the database. This, you'll have more options available. You can save them to fields that contain drop downs or mini pickers. So it can be a really powerful tool to help 
update information on a candidate record. So for example, you could deploy this to candidates who haven't indicated what kind of work they're interested in. You could ask them the question, you could specify specific responses, and then depending upon their responses, you could have different categories get added to their record inside of the database. Now, for fields that can support multiple values, we do give you the choice where you can either add whatever choice they, they choose to the existing values, or you can choose to replace all existing values and just keep that one corresponding value that they picked. So with this question type, they can only select one answer. So it does not support kind of multiple selections, but it is a powerful tool to help clean up data or to get preferences inside of the system. The, the text question allows the individual to type in a free form response. So you can ask and have an open-ended question. Again, you can save this information into fields inside of the database. Again, it can be a powerful tool to update information, but also can be a great way to give the individual taking the survey kind of the, the freedom to give the response uh, kind of exactly what they want to. So that would be an example of a text question. The date question, this allows uh, a specific kind of a, a date module to pop up so someone can indicate when they're available or when they would like to chat. And again, you'll be able to save the, that information directly to a date field inside of Bullhorn. So that can be powerful if you're looking to kind of understand when someone's going to be available, when you want them, when they want you to call them, those types of things. You could utilize that question type here. A statement isn't going to allow the individual to answer in any way. It's just a statement. Um, so it would just, just be kind of information that you can just send out. They, they are able to reply in any way. And then we also have an update resume question. And here, this will prompt them. Again, you can customize the question, utilize merge tags if you like. This will prompt them to upload a file. And with uh, that file, when it gets attached, we will forward it to the email address that you provide during the onboarding implementation uh, kind of setup here if you do want the, the update resume option for surveys. And then that will get auto forwarded, the, the file will get auto forwarded to that email address. So if you would like this option and it doesn't appear inside of your survey questions, just provide an email address that you'd like the resumes forwarded to, to hear fish support, we'll gladly enable it. Most of our clients utilize a resume parsing address for that purpose, so that if uh, the candidate exists in the database, you're able to just have the file attachment go right to that candidate record. So once your questions are here, you'll get an overview kind of, of, of the questions. You're able to reorder them using these arrows on the right. If you like to just quickly move them down using the up or down arrows. Now, once a survey is kind of built and configured, you have the ability to test the survey and this will pop up the survey over the website, uh, the URL that you specify, and you can kind of go through it just to see what it would look like from a candidate's perspective. And you can go through all this. And again, then once you X out, you would land on the landing page there. So that'd be a great way to see what the survey is going to render just to make sure everything is looking good. Now, once the survey has been deployed, you can come into each individual survey and hit this view metrics button. This will provide you an idea of kind of all the responses that you've received. So this is sortable by time. So you can look at certain time frames, all time or custom times you can specify just specific re responses that you're looking for. The summary page or tab that we're on now will give again kind of the, the overall survey stats. Then you'll see a summary of each question that's included in your survey and then the responses depending on the question type you'll get a different visual representation of uh, the responses that you've gotten. You're also able in this advanced search section where you can search for specific audiences or segments that have taken the survey. So if you want to, for example, find responses from candidates that are placed at a certain company or owned by a certain recruiter, you can figure and configure this 
area out here, that search will save and then you'll only see the results from those individuals uh, here in the survey section. So it can be a, a powerful tool if you want to get down in a very refined way to a specific uh, survey results from, from a specific group of individuals. And then if you're looking just for the raw data, you can go to this responses tab and you'll see time stamped all the responses, all the answers that were provided. And you can, this also can be exported if you'd like to do some additional data manipulation with it. So once you have created a survey, it will appear here in the survey overview area. You'll see kind of a, a little overview of um, you know, kind of how many have been started, how many have been completed with, with each survey, how many questions along is the survey, and then the used in column here will let you know how many automations that the survey is being utilized in. Now, the first step when you want to deploy a survey is to build it. You have to build it here in the survey area. And then to make uh, a survey kind of go out to candidates or client contacts, you're going to do that from the automations area. So whenever you're inside of an automation, when you click the plus button for the automation steps, one of your options will be send survey. You want to click that. Then this will prompt you to choose which survey that you want to send. So you pick the survey that you created and then you pick the delivery method in which you want to send it. You can do it via text message or via email. And then here you can copy an existing email that's already in your instance of Herefish. You can go from a template from the library or you can build it from scratch. Um, if you're utilizing the email functionality and you do the plain text method, and this will be the same for the text message, the survey will just be a link inside of the text message or the email that when clicked will pop them to the URL and start the survey. If you utilize the survey in the rich text email builder, the first question of the survey will populate uh, in the body of the email uh, and then they're able to kind of take this and pop to the survey once they interact with that question. So that is surveys and how you deploy them. Let us know if you have any additional questions.